Hello everyone, what's up? It's me again, Junkmaster3, and uh, it's time for another update video. Uh, I have some more films that I'm waiting on uh, for in the mail, which hasn't uh, arrived yet, but I'll probably just, just save those titles for another vi like update video in the near future. So uh, yeah, keep your eyes open for that as well. So. Uh, and also, I actually am thinking of making the top 10 and top the top 10 best and worst films that I've watched during 2020 as well. Uh, because something tells me it's not going to happen that I'm going to do it with Daniel this time. Uh, mainly because of the whole COVID-19 situation. Uh, and I take that real seriously as well. So, uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. What are, are we waiting for? Let's... Uh, Let's just begin with the update video. First up, we have a VHS tape of a film which I think has never been released on DVD or Blu-ray, but uh, yeah, and I've never, never seen this movie either. I mean, I picked it up because of the title and because it's like a gang type of film. This is from 1989 and the film is called The Chains. Apparently, this is also known as The Chains uh, Warriors of Chicago. Uh, I had some hard time to try to find this movie on IMDb, uh, but if you just type in The Chains and you just type in 1989 afterwards, you will get to that site, uh, that site, that page for the film. Uh, yeah, like I said before, this is pretty much a blind buy. I just wanted to pick it up because it's a gang film from the 80s, and most of them I've been a big fan of in general, so uh, yeah, The Chains. That's the VHS tape, the only VHS tape I picked up. Now on to the DVDs. First up, we have a film called Cradle of Fear, which has Danny Filth from Cradle of Filth in it. And uh, I think he might have been involved in the... Uh, no, I don't think he produced it, but I think he did definitely did the music for this. And it's directed by Alex Shandon, who is known in the UK for making some really uh, gory and uh, controversial type of films in general and I've only heard that this is supposed to be one of the gorier films that he's made uh, over the years so uh, yeah this is gonna be really entertaining to watch probably so yeah Cradle of Fear let's put that over there we'll see how it goes uh, next one is another horror film I think there's only yeah I think that there's only two horror films on this update video actually so uh, yeah what do you know next up we have a film released by the good <laughs> company of Vipco and when when you know when it comes to Vipco they never release movies with cover art it's just that bland title of the film but that was the only way that I could get a hold of this film and the movie is called The House of Witchcraft which was directed by Umberto Lenzi and uh, Umberto Lenz is probably most known for, of course, Cannibal Ferox and uh, Man from Deep River, which I think is known as something else as well. But uh, yeah, and also he directed that god awful other like ghost story type of deal called The Ghost House, which came out like one year before this one. And it had such an annoying doll in it and like a sort of like a lullaby song or something, which is just so damn odd and weird and just kept having that like on a loop throughout the entire film it, at least it just felt like that so uh, I'm just praying that this is not something similar to that so uh, yeah The House of Witchcraft from 1989 by Humberto Lenzi then we have something that's probably gonna be a so bad it's good type of film because this this looks so stupid and ridiculous at the same time uh, the movie is Quigley with Gary Busey and Oz Perkins um, yeah, what to say about this one? I haven't seen this one yet, but I've only heard really funny things about it. So, uh, yeah, quickly. Then we have a film with, I think the following three titles, yeah, is Charles, Charles Bronson films. And I'm going to start with this one because this took so damn many years for me to find. Uh, because I've been on a hunt for this movie for quite some time and, uh, Seems to be pretty damn hard and rare to get a hold of. Like, yeah, and the movie is called *The Evil That Men Do*. Uh, this is the Swedish uh, title on the front cover. Uh, often, when it comes to Charles Bronson, you just want action, and most of the time he really delivers that in his films. So, 
uh, yeah, the evil that men do from the early 80s, 83 to be exact. And then we have a, I think this was some sort of made for TV film, but I could be so wrong about that. But uh, this is directed by Irvin Kirshner, who is probably most famous for directing, uh, what was that film? Empire Strikes Back, sorry, I just completely lost track there. Uh, and the movie is called, let's see, what's the English title? Raid on Enteb. I probably butchered that title, the Enteb thing, but uh, this movie has a really interesting cast. James Woods, Shepard Cotto, Martin Balsam, John Saxon. Uh, probably going to be awesome. Then the last Charles Bronson film I picked up is a film called Borderline. Yeah. And when it comes to some of these films, I'm a little bit unsure if I have showed you all of these movies in any previous episode video. I might have, some of these titles I might have showed before, but yeah, that's how it goes sometimes. Next one is a film called Hitman, which is based off of some video game which I haven't played. I think they made like some sort of sequel to this like two or three years ago, uh, which I have not seen. I've not seen this one yet either, obviously. Um, but uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. I think this is some French... Apparently, I think this is... I can be so wrong about this, but I think the guy who directed this, Xavier Gens, I think he directed Frontiers. But I can be so wrong. I probably have to double check on that afterwards. Uh, then I picked up... I think I have watched this before, like once or twice before on TV, but... That was such a long time ago and I barely remembered anything from it, but I'm a big fan of the original one and I do like some of the sequels as well. And the movie is Planet of the Apes, the Tim Burton version. Heard very mixed things about this one, but I am still ready to give it a chance because if I remember correctly, I did like this one, but nothing can really beat the original when it comes to that. So that entire storyline and all the performances and that. Um, but yeah, I, I'm probably one of those that actually do like some of those sequels as well, even though some of them are quite cheesy at some point. Then we have Paul Verhoeven's film called Showgirls, which only has gotten so damn many bad reviews like over the years. And to be honest, that's the main reason why I wanted to check this one out, because uh, when there's like a film that got that gets so damn much hate, you just want to see it for some reason, at least some when it comes to some of the older films. Um, but uh, yeah, I only heard bad things about this one, but I'm still gonna give it a chance because it's Paul Verhoeven and he's directed Starship Troopers and Robocop, among other really great uh, films in general. So yeah, Showgirls. And apparently, I'm not too sure, I think this might have been mentioned um, by some other YouTubers over here, but uh, I think there is a version of this release, not this release, but there's another release which has her, but without the panties. Uh, I, uh, maybe that's just something that I may, I'm just so per perverted that I just say that, but I think there was some sort of release at one point that had that, but I think they just got rid of it, uh, so yeah. Next up we have The Cable Guy, which I think I had before, but I think it gave it away to a friend or, or I just lost it, I have no idea, but I think this is a really hilarious and underrated film, and uh, Jim Carrey in this. This is one of my favorite Jim Carrey performances, really. This one and The Mask are my favorite ones, and maybe Batman Forever as well. Uh, so I think he was really at his best in the 90s. I think he has gotten a little bit more, not boring, but not as fun in the 2000s. But uh, I'm still really looking forward to check out him in the Sonic movie, which I still have in my shelf somewhere. Uh, so, yeah. And then we have the film called The Final Countdown. Uh, with Kirk Douglas and Martin Sheen. Once again, a film I think I had before, but I just lost it. Don't know why. But that's that's sometimes going to happen when you're a collector. Next one is a film which I always wanted to see, and I never found it like anywhere or like for a decent price anywhere, and I finally got it for a really, really cheap price. I think I only paid like $4 or something for it, and I know this goes for like up to like $20 from time to time so uh, yeah and the movie is called Sid and Nancy which is based off of the um, Sid Vicious case uh, he he and his girlfriend so if you know the story about 
uh, that I think you probably already know how this movie is going to end because it's pretty much like a biography on on uh, on uh, those two uh, people. So uh, yeah, Sid and Nancy. Then we have another film which I've been on the hunt for for quite some time and uh, yeah, this is directed by... Wait a minute, this is directed by one, two, three, four, five different directors, so I had no idea about that before actually, but uh, the Amazon Women on the Moon. Uh, once again, awesome cover art, but I heard this is some sort of parody on all like TV shows back in the 80s. Sounds quite familiar actually, because I think there's another film which came out in the same type of era, which was called... UHF, which I'm a big fan of. So if the if this is anywhere near as good as that one, I'm gonna be in for a blast blast with this one. So, yeah. Then we have a film with uh, an actor which I've only seen. I think I've only seen one of his films before, and that was was that called Tommy Boy or something like that? And the movie is uh, Beverly Hills Ninja with Chris Farley. Uh, this particular release, the Swedish release goes for really stupid money from time to time, but uh, yeah, maybe might have paid a little bit way too much for it, but this is a film you rarely see for sale, like, anywhere, so uh, yeah, Chris Farley, he seems to be like a one one type of actor that you either hate or love, uh, I really liked Tomboy, uh, so that's the reason why I just wanted to track this movie down, so, uh, because I've heard this is one of his best roles, really, so yeah, Beverly Hill. What's it called? Beverly Hills Ninja. Hill, uh, Beverly Hills Ninja. Sorry. Then we have the. I think this is part four. Uh, Highlander Endgame. I already had the three uh, previous Highlander films, and I think this is the very last Highlander film which had uh, Christopher Lambert in it. Um, Seems like those are like hit or, hit or miss, those type of films. I'm a big fan of the original, but I have yet to watch part 2, and 3, and 4. So uh, I just figured, well, I should just get this one. I just forget about the rest of the ones that came after this. Because I think they only released one or two other films after this. And I've only heard really, really bad things about those. So, yeah, I'm not going to bother. Uh, then the next film, The Lost, is some... The last, the last couple of films are Japanese films. Uh, first up, we have Yakuza Demon with uh, what's his name, uh, Riki Tagoshi. Tagoshi, I'm probably butchering his name, but he was in Battle Royale 2 and he was in the Dead or Alive trilogy by Takashi Mika as well. Great, awesome, entertaining films. So uh, if he's any any near as entertaining to watch in this one that it was in uh, the Dead. The, Dead or Alive trilogy, I, I'm a bit, I'm probably in for a blast. I think I probably said that with another movie right here as well. So yeah, that's just when it comes to me when it, my English just goes bonkers sometimes. Uh, but uh, yeah, um, Yakuza Demon by Takashi Miike. Then we have a box set, uh, three films directed by Beat Takeshi Kitano, Take, bleh, Beat Takeshi Kitano. And uh, the movies are Violent Cop, Boiling Point, and Sonatine. Sonatine, not too sure how you pronounce that, but really awesome looking box. I'm not too sure if these particular releases, if they are cut or not, because this is like a pretty old uh, UK release. So they might be cut in some way or another. If they are, I'm probably going to track down uh, another release of uh, these films. So uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Uh, so yeah, that's all of the movies that I recently picked up, and uh, yeah, keep your eyes open for the top ten best and worst films I've watched during two thousand. Damn, sorry, uh, during two thousand twenteen. So twenteen, twenteen, twenty, twenty, two thousand twenty. Uh, sorry, I just keep mumbling on now, so I'm just gonna end the video. So uh, keep your eyes open for the next video, and see you next time. Bye bye.